and I'm a master's student here at the University of Bristol. I research the classification of stars using different machine learning tools. So I try to figure out which object in the night sky is a star and which object is not a star. So today I'll, I, I'll talk about like how we use these, uh, how, how, why we classify these stars and uh, like how the machine learning helps us and why we need to use machine learning to do that. So the first thing is why is we need to know why we need to classify stars and from what. So as, as mentioned earlier, like uh, there are different galaxy clusters and everything, but they all contain galaxies. So compared to stars, we have galaxies, active galactic nuclei and quasars, which we try to separate out so we can study them more. And these objects uh, are much bigger than much much bigger than stars because they are made up of stars. But because they're so far away from us, they they seem so small. And so galaxies are just a collection of stars and dust, while which have like a supermassive black hole in the center. And if there is matter falling into this black hole, it emits high energy signals in different wavelengths, and we see them as jets in active galactic nuclei and if those jets are pointed towards us they appear really bright and so they appear like really bright point objects so because of how like in the images it seems like these are these are really big objects but when we look at these objects like in the night sky they're really small so like if you look in this animation like th those these two galaxies right they seem really big but when you look at the starting point uh, in a normal image, they look really small. So that's why we need to uh, figure out a way to uh, like classify them from stars. Because if you want to study them, we do not want to by mistake like get uh, information from stars. So when one of the tools we use to figure out uh, what object is a star versus which object is and which is which is not a star we you we, we we try to observe them in different filters so these filters are kind of similar to how we have like uh, the the instagram filters and mobile filters where we just observe them in different way instead of like having uh red just just observing something in red blue or green we also observe them in different wavelengths and so like this is an example of the whirlpool galaxy where on the leftmost image, we see it in the normal visible spectrum. So like uh, how we would see it if we were nearby. And the uh, image on the right uh, also adds on the infrared colors, which we cannot see. And the image on the right of that is just the infrared colors. And the image on the uh, right of that is uh, uh, the image of whirlpool galaxy in ultraviolet and these different images in like different bands they convey different information they, they provide us with different information so the information uh, the image in infrared will tell us where the dust inside that galaxy is and the image in ultraviolet would tell us where a lot of the new stars are forming so we, we are able to get a lot of information out of these uh, images just if we take them in different bands so that's how we try to study them and separate them out. And so each object, like we can photograph it in different filters. And as the as these filters uh, cover different part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and we, we can see how bright they are in different bands. And we can, so we can use that to deduce the information. And because we have so many, so many stars and uh, non-star objects in the sky, we have to figure out an efficient way to classify these objects. And to do that, we are now exploring uh, machine learning methods. So machine learning is in basic terms, a way to teach a computer how to learn to solve a complex problem by itself. Like it just, uh, abuse, it's, you use mathematics to teach the computer to learn itself to solve the problem. And a simple form of uh, machine learning is called, uh, is a neural network called feed forward perceptron. 
this works by emulating what scientists in the in the early uh, in the late 1900s thought like how a human brain worked so these neural networks are a collection of these so called neurons which which perform simple mathematical operations so if, if we can we can uh, take an example of a single neuron here and if we have so this neuron would have two inputs the i0 and i1 and we would multiply these uh, two inputs with a weight w0 and w1 and just add them together with uh, another constant called bias so it's just performing multiplication and addition on the input uh, input values we have and we get an output so these linear operations on the input values will give us a completely different output and we can change these weights and biases to get a different output based on the different inputs so a usual feed forward uh, perceptron model will contain a lot of these neurons stack on top of each other so if we take the brightness of the objects we observe in the different bands and use them as inputs we can uh, we can be, we can generate a completely different output and so if we if we uh, in this example so this is just an example of a feed forward neural network we use for classifying stars so in this we just have the input brightness of the different objects of the object in different bands and then we just pass it forward through the neural network so we individually take the inputs and then mul multiply them by the weights and add the bias for each of these circles and we do that repeatedly and then we do some processing some some processing in the middle and then we continue doing this step so the uh, the output from each of the uh, neurons is then put put as input in another neuron so these uh, these multiplication and addition steps happen one after the other and when we combine all of these different steps uh, like going from the start till the end we, we get a completely different uh, we get a completely different output compared to what we had as an input so this output would be a function of what the input brightness was but it is but it has gone through so many steps of multiplication and addition that there's there's not a really simple mathematical like way to just write down what is happening so in general like if we have the values for the weights and biases as random it would just give us a random value at the output but we need to find the perfect values for those weight and bias multiplication constants to get the desired output we want so the the way we do is uh, the way we do this is using a method called gradient descent this method is uh, is a little complicated but can be thought of as just rolling down like balls on a hill so due to gravity like how like a ball higher up on the hill will roll down to the lowest point in its vicinity we can also assume uh we, we can assume that the location of the ball in the x axis is uh, corresponds to its weight to the weight value and the the height of the ball would correspond to the error it has in the final output so if we start at a, a point and let the ball roll down it will change the we will get a different weight value for and, and a different error value so in this case the the ball would roll down to a point over here and in this case the ball will roll down to a point over here and if you look at it, the the two heights of the uh, hills are uh, the two heights of the balls in the end would be different and we'll get a different error and we we know that like this would be the best uh, best location for the ball to land because that will be the lowest but it's not always uh, we can't always see the the location of the lowest point in the for for all the weight values because like the uh, the network i showed earlier this this network would have 10000s of these uh, different balls rolling down at the same time so th that's why like this process is 
um, is not like a is not like you solve an equation to find the exact values. We have to like do some trial and error. And when we when we find the best uh, best model possible through this uh, this trial and error process, we get we get a, a functional neural network which can. Uh, which, 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 which we are able to use to classify stars from the active galactic nuclei, the galaxies and different quasars. Yeah. So, I mean, you talked a lot about different neurons, which I'm assuming each one of those is like a small piece of calculation, is that right? Yeah. So what would be a sort of an example of a calculation you might want to do on the readouts from your telescope, or whatever you're using? Uh, so normally what we have is, uh, I can show this better. So when we have, uh, uh, so like in this case, we have like different bands which observe the same objects in uh, the same objects in different bands. So we get like a different, uh, so if we have like the object is how, depending on how bright it is in different wavelength regions, yeah, we'll get, we'll get different values and we can use those different values in different bands. So like if we have, if you look at this object, right, the Volpo galaxy, it is, a it would appear really bright in the infrared compared to the UV. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, use those different uh, like differences in brightness as the input. Okay. And when we multiply those inputs with some constants, which we try to optimize for later on, we'll get a different output. And those outputs when chained together would, would, would end up giving us a classification. Okay, so your, your, sort of, your equation would be sort of like, finding out sort of the intensity of a particular wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum and putting together what the most likely wavelengths are for different types of objects and then sort of like working out which one it's likely to be based on the different intensities and the different wavelengths is that right yes yes okay that makes sense thank you <laughs> 